It's too bad you guys in Houston didn't come along for the ride. I've got this sensational view of Earth where I'm standing. And as I look at the next bridge, I'm wondering if I could hit a golf ball over it in this gravity. Anybody want to give me a hug? That was an excerpt from astronaut Steve Austin's famous transmission to Earth during his historic walk on the moon several years ago. It was the voice of a courageous explorer, a man dedicated to the pursuit of man's knowledge and the expansion of his horizons. And it was for those very reasons that Steve Austin was piloting the experimental aircraft that exploded so devastatingly on the Nevada salt flats today, leaving Colonel Steve Austin a broken shell of a man, so badly injured his doctors say he won't be alive in the morning. Let us all say a silent prayer for Colonel Austin tonight, a true American hero, a man history will never forget. You know, there's a very strong chance Austin won't be alive in the morning, Oscar. It's your job to make those other doctors liars, Rudy. We're in a top security government medical center, where high-ranking Oscar Goldman and top scientist Rudy Wells have been listening to one of the many broadcasts devoted to Steve Austin's tragedy. Is your team all set to go? They're scrubbing now. The plastics are already in the operating room, along with the micro-circuitry and the other hardware. Oscar, we've had the technology to do this for some time now. Every scientific variable has been computed and taken into account. Except for one thing. The human factor. Right. We still don't know the extent of the psychological effects this operation will have on a human being. Assuming the patient even survives. But if he does, Rudy, we'll be witnessing one of the scientific achievements of the century. The birth of the world's first bionic man. For 14 hours, Rudy Wells and his team of highly trained specialists painstakingly labor over the battered and broken body of Colonel Steve Austin, implementing scientific principles and technological procedures never before tested on a human being, and overseeing each and every phase of the incredibly intricate operation as a vigilant Oscar Goldman, silently spectating from the observation room. It is not until seven days later that Steve Austin opens his eyes to groggily wonder where he is without the slightest inkling that one of the eyes he just opened is not his own. Ah, am I dreaming, or is everyone in heaven as beautiful as you? You're not dreaming, and you're not in heaven, Colonel, but thanks for the compliment. Now, take your medication. There you are. Thank you, nurse. Uh, could you leave us alone now? Who are you? My name's Oscar Goldman, and this is Dr. Rudy Wells. He headed the surgical team that worked on you. Colonel Austin? I don't know how you guys managed it, but thanks for pulling me through. I was sure I was a goner on the way down. How do you feel? A little dragged out and groggy, but otherwise, great. Like I've never been better. That's exactly right, Colonel Austin. You never have been better. You're better now than you ever were before. What's that supposed to mean? In saving your life, Colonel Austin, we had to make some adjustments in your physical makeup. Adjustments? Improvements would be a better word. You're now faster, stronger, more durable than you ever were. Take a look at your right hand. It's my hand. So what? Move the fingers. I... I don't get it. I see the fingers moving, but it doesn't feel like I'm moving them. You are, and you're not. The nerve impulses from your brain are being relayed via microcircuitry and mini transistors. Wait a minute. It's not just my fingers. My whole arm feels this way. Just what did you guys do to me? We saved your life the only way possible. A way that only became possible this year, thanks to recent breakthroughs in technology. What sort of technology? Bionics, Colonel Austin. We have used advanced scientific techniques to duplicate what your own flesh and blood used to do. Used to do? Your injuries were extremely grave, Colonel. You lost your right arm and both your legs, along with your left eye. You mean this arm I've got now? It's bionic, as are your legs and your eye. We don't expect you to adjust to this all at once. After all... I don't want any part of any of it. You should have let me die in that plane. I'm getting out of here. No, Austin, you must stay in your bed. Out of my way. You mustn't. Your bionic legs aren't ready yet. But like an enraged wild animal, Steve Austin leaps from his bed, his bionic arm knocking Oscar and Rudy aside like they were no more than rag dolls. <laughs> don't be a fool, Austin. Rudy! As Oscar Goldman rushes to a stunned Rudy's side, a bionic wild man begins to charge through the hospital corridor. Stop. Where are the orderlies? There they are. <laughs> it's no use. Those bionic limbs are too much fun. This will stop them. Mr. Goldman, you've got the tranquilizer gun. Rudy said compressed air charge will put him to sleep in seconds. The bionic man feels the drugged air blast against his neck, whirls angrily to face his attacker, and then... I didn't think we'd ever stop him. You dosed him just in time, Mr. Goldman. If you ask me, all the government's got so far for their six million is an uncontrollable wild man. It is another 24 hours before Steve Austin opens his eyes again to see Oscar Goldman again standing at his bedside. How do you feel? 
After yesterday, how come I'm not strapped to my bed? You lost control of yourself, that's all. It was understandable under the circumstances. Besides, I don't think we could find a strap your bionic arm couldn't break through. I know, I'm stronger, faster, better, right? But you left out one thing. I'm not a man anymore. I'm a freak. I'm not going to debate the issue with you, Colonel. There's someone on the floor who's been begging to meet you. He's a general's son, and he's been paralyzed from the waist down. I'm afraid not even Bionics can repair the damage to his spinal cord. At that moment, the door opens, and a ten-year-old boy, strapped to a wheelchair, rolls himself in. It's all right, Bobby. Come in. Bobby, this is Steve Austin. Colonel, this is little Bobby Phillips. Steve Austin? Oh, wow. You don't know what a thrill it is to meet you. I'll leave you two alone now. I've been your biggest fan, Colonel Austin, ever since that day I watched you walk on the moon on TV. Boy, that was some crash you were in last week. But Mr. Goldman says you'll be okay. That's what he tells me. Anyway, I was in an accident, too, but I wasn't as lucky as you. Still, if one of us had to end up stuck in a wheelchair, I'm glad it was me. I'm just a little kid. I'm not nearly as important as an astronaut. You really believe that, don't you? Well, I've got to be going now. I'll be back later to get your autograph, if that's okay. The crippled youngster wheels himself out, leaving an ashamed Steve Austin alone with his thoughts and his self-pity. The next morning, as Oscar and Rudy walk along the corridor of the hospital's top-secret bionic wing... So the kid did get to see him yesterday. Yes, but we still don't know what effect, if any, the... That sound. What is it? It seems to be coming from the therapy room. That sounds like a treadmill. And as they fling open the door to the well-equipped therapeutic gym... It's Austin. I see. Look at the speedometer. He's running over 60 miles per hour and still accelerating. Incredible. The bionic legs are functioning perfectly. Rudy, I think Colonel Austin just may have decided being bionic might be worth a try after all. And several days later, a pleased Oscar Goldman records an impressive progress report into his personal diary. And it turned out that the session with a little boy snapped Austin out of his self-pity and back to his senses. We immediately began running tests on him and found to our amazement his bionic strength was powerful enough to lift entire cars. His bionic legs were mighty enough to enable him to jump a full 30 feet in the air. His bionic eye was telescopic enough to read the lettering on a postage stamp from 100 yards away. Everyone on the project agrees our $6 million man was worth every penny he cost. But I can't help wondering what Steve Austin would say if he ever found out that Bobby Phillips could walk as well as any other boy. Because he was an actor, I heard, to play on Steve Austin's sympathy and common sense. It was a dirty trick, I admit, but sometimes in a crisis... End of tape for now. Signing off. Come in. Come in, Steve. You should be very proud of yourself. Your test performances have far exceeded our expectations. That's just what I wanted to talk about, Oscar. Oh? I wasn't an astronaut and a test pilot for nothing. I've been around long enough to know the government doesn't invest six million dollars into a man without expecting something in return. I can't fault your logic, Colonel. I didn't think you would. I owe you a few, don't I? Let's just say there'll be occasional jobs we'd like you to do for us. In fact, I could brief you on your first assignment right now. What do you say, pal? Steve Austin, reporting for duty. Pal. (laughs) 